Hey guys, Akil Stokes here with Tier1Trading.com and welcome back to another episode of the Weekend Trading Edge where I give you my outlook of what's on my radar for the week to come in the markets. We ended the week with a high impact news event and we have some more high impact news events coming in the week ahead. And today I want to talk about understanding the different layers of those news events and also take a look at how they may affect our trading ideas for the week ahead. So we're coming off of Jobs Friday where we have our infamous non-farm payroll report along with a handful of other job related announcements. And this is one of the most popular, I guess, releases in the market and it comes out every first Friday. And I had a few questions about this release because we had a positive number. We were over 350, which is a, a place that we like to be over. And we beat expectations, yet the market didn't react in a positive way. And a lot of traders reached out confused. They said, Akil, I don't get it. Good news, but we didn't necessarily see a super good move for the dollar. What gives? And we always say this about news, right? There is a difference between kind of retail and casual traders and investors that try to trade off of news and those who actually know what they're doing. And the difference is one group reads the headline, right? So the now, the other group looks a little bit deeper and looks at what it actually means. So the headline says positive, we beat this, good number, you should assume good news. But underneath that, there are some more factors in play, right? Despite a positive number, it's still a lower number than the previous month, which shows a little bit of a decline. And with recession fears on the horizon, right? A decline in jobs is something that may lead to uncertainty about that. Later on, we're going to take a look at some interest rate decisions that are coming out from the Bank of Canada this week, and I believe the U.S. next week, and talk about the same thing, how despite a raise in interest rates, which should signal a positive move, right, what the market is actually going to be paying more attention to is what is the future interest rate hike going to look like. In Canada's case, they're looking to slow down a little bit. So the question is, how much are they going to ease up? And that's going to affect really the outcome of that news announcement, not the actual hike, because that's already been priced in. Now, if you're new to news and want to learn more about how to interpret it, how to discover what matters and what doesn't matter, check out a recent Trading Coach podcast that I put out on the subject. All right, now we're gonna hop into the chart and take a look at how last week's past news and this week's upcoming news may affect our predictions in the market. So we're here on the Euro dollar weekly. And if you remember from last week, our prediction was that we could make it down to 102s, right? We smashed through our previous level of structure support here and came right to that 102 level, which if we look left, was an intermediate level of structure, right? Right at the highs here. Well, I still think there is room to go higher. And despite kind of the negative or neutral reaction to the non-farm payroll, overall, the dollar is still the strongest currency out there. And the euro is one of the weakest and doesn't really have signs of getting any stronger. So putting those two elements together, we should see continued bearish movement here on the euro dollar. And if we are going to see that continued bearish movement on the euro dollar, I think the next stopping point is going to be this green line right here. You've heard us before talk about ice zones, periods where previous uh, support turns to resistance, previous resistance turns to support. We got a nice one right here around 96s, 97s. We can adjust that a little bit later, but just so you get a general idea of where it's at. And I know despite below parity, I do think we can continue to fall to that level. Here's how. So if we come here on the daily, you'll see that we had a very bullish end of the week here on Friday with this uh, rejection candle, we call this a pin bar, where price action pushes down and gonna get sucked all the way back up to end with a very positive bullish candle. So we may see a little period of relief, a little retracement in the market, which is gonna be a good sign for anyone looking to add or involve themselves in new shorts. We head down to the four hour. This picture gets a little bit clearer. You can probably see on the hourly as well, but let's go down to the four hour and you can see the loss of momentum that happened in the market, right? We have a steep sloping market and then it starts to kind of bend off a little bit and we followed it up with um, some bullish diversions here on our RSI as well. So the question is, if we are gonna see some relief, where is that relief gonna come to? And there are three main points that we can look at. The most aggressive points are gonna be right here, right? our previous level of structure, right? This previous uh, outside return, this previous level right here, and then ultimately this zone 
that exists from right here, this new structure low, to the very top of this high momentum candle. And if we bring out our volume profile, you're gonna see a good look at where the interest is in the market as well. So I'm gonna bring this from our swing high to swing low, and this is gonna show us how much volume exists at each specific price point. And you can see that we have a massive amount of volume in this area right here. We can kind of box this off like this. You can see the overlaps on the box that I drew in. Not a lot of volume coming down here, right? So it shows us that we could get some relief up into this area and that if we're looking for a place where participants are gonna be interested again, it's probably gonna come right back up at this level about 103.60s, 103.5, something like that. So a few options here, again, if you're an aggressive trader, maybe you're a lower time frame trader, definitely take a shot for continuation trades at each of these levels. If you're more of a long-term trader, you're a little bit more patient, see if we get some release uh, relief up here. Uh, maybe just curious, maybe a Fibonacci as well, 618, swing high to swing low, my Fibonacci retracement. Yeah, right around a 618 Fibonacci retracement as well, which is the golden mean in the market. So keep an eye out for Euro dollar. Don't be surprised if we get a little bit of relief to start the week, a little bit of a, a pullback, and then we continue on our path that we were on before because overall, nothing really has changed, especially leading into another interest rate hike for the dollar coming up in a few weeks. Speaking of interest rate hikes, we got one coming up for Bank of Canada on Wednesday. This is an interesting one because our Forex factory is saying a move from 1.5 to 2. However, everything I'm reading says it's more of a 75 basis point hike, um, kind of following up on what the dollar has been doing, and we should expect a 2.25. So I'm not sure if they're late and they'll update that later, um, but as far as I'm concerned, the expectation is a 75% hike up to 2.25 and not a 50% hike. Um, but regardless, I want to follow up on an idea that we had this week in the market that was taken into account way before the news events. Again, if you're new to this channel, we are technical traders here at Tier 1 Trading, meaning everything that we do is based off the chart. So we are chart first. We do pay attention to the news, and if it gives us a chance to enter a, a home run trade, meaning that our news events, our fundamentals align for our technicals, then boom, we get more bang for our buck. But first and foremost, we're looking at the charts first. And it's pretty cool that really our fundamentals is going to follow up with an idea that we already had. So I won't redo all the analysis on here, but to keep it short and simple, we have kind of rounded off here. You're going to see a very similar situation on the dollar Swiss as well. But we've rounded off here on the Canada Swiss, created a nice little consolidation zone, little accumulation phase, and then we broke and closed right above our highs. Now, the first opportunity to enter, right, this was a lower time frame opportunity, is right here. You can see we broke our previous level of structure resistance, higher high, higher close. We had a nice little pullback, higher high, higher close candle here as well, and then boom, took off higher. There is still a lot more room to move here as well because our expectation is a move to one of two levels, right? We have our 7650 level right here, which is our inside level of structure. That is a level that I'm personally interested in because I'm more of a conservative trader. And then we have our highs up here around 77s as well, right before our high momentum bearish move. And again, you can see the volume profile coming in showing a massive amount of volume in this accumulation area. And then really nothing until we inch right back up into our previous structure highs. So. If we're expecting some Canadian strength because of the potential interest rate hike, um, this is going to work right up our alley for a move higher up to this level. And of course, you know, refer to your trading plan for how you want to take it. I'm a pullback trader, so I like waiting for pullbacks, cheaper prices and a chance to trade it up. But you can certainly look at it as a breakout as well. Now, keep in mind as far as news, and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, what the market is really paying attention to isn't necessarily the interest rate hike. Again, I think it's known that what's going to happen is going to happen. There's always a chance for surprises, but you never know. What's more important is that Canada said, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, you know, they've, they've hiked, up, well, I think, three times in a row. This is going to be the third time, I should say. We're going to do these three interest rate hikes, get to this level, and then we're going to start dialing it back, right? That's what their plan says. So the biggest thing that the market's going to be paying attention to is, are they sticking to that plan? Are they still going to dial things back? Are they still going to plan on being aggressive? If they dial things back, what are they going to dial things back to, right? Are they going to dial it back to 50? Are they going to dial it back to 25, right? Especially if they hike by 75. Those are the things that the market is going to pay attention to because the market has already priced in the now, essentially, it's looking for what is next. So 
pay attention not just to the interest rate hike, but the statement that comes along with. It. Now, one more pair I want to take a look at is the Canada yen. And we know that yen, we talked about the weakness of yen and, and whatnot. They recently had an incident. They had a former um, a former prime minister, I believe, assassinated, which is kind of in a weird way. It's made people flock towards the yen as a safe haven pair. Um, and there's some concerns about what monetary policy will be in the future as they get ready for some elections. But in general, the yen has been very weak. We can look at the chart and see that, right? And Canada, right? <laughs> the Canadian dollar has been extremely strong, especially with these interest rate hikes on the horizon. So the question is, is there room for continuation on here? And we've put in a few classic breakout patterns here on Canada, uh, Canada yen, I should say, right? One has been a flag pattern back here, which boom, we broke out to the upside. And now we're forming a wedge pattern, right? A wedge pattern, you can call it a, a a pennant pattern if you want as well, doesn't matter. Um, but the point is you look at this and you may expect some type of breakout to the upside or the downside. Typically the upside because we have a flagpole that is bullish, but you never know. Now, what's important to pay attention to is where are we at overall? We're not at a very good level overall. We are at previous level of structure. Let me just hop out to a weekly. You can see that we have our previous highs right here, which we've held, and we've got kind of these small overlapping highs here as well. So we haven't cleared structure. So this doesn't, what that does is it doesn't make this kind of an all out breakout where, you know, you should establish a position beforehand because it's a no brainer break to the upside. In my opinion, you need to wait for proof. And well, interest rate decision on Wednesday, maybe that triggers something in the market that gives us our proof. Once we do get that proof, there's a massive amount of room to the upside, right? I think we can travel all the way, if we zoom out here in the weekly again, all the way to these levels right here, looking at basically 115 even. So again, put things in perspective, we're currently trading at what? Do, do, do. Here we go. Currently trading at about 106, 107s. I think we can move to about 115s if we do get that breakout. So. Keep that on your watch list to see if this um, interest rate hike kind of triggers that expansion up and then look for the follow through. If for some reason we get the opposite reaction, well, then we have a potential advanced pattern formation forming as well. So let me actually draw this advanced pattern formation out on my NinjaTrader charts. This is my preferred platform because we've got these cool tools um, that help you out. By the way, these tools are available with your 14 day trial membership. So if you like pattern recognition tools, if you like these boxes that show uh, visual support and resistance, Sign up for that 14 day trial. You get it free with the trial, along with courses and live sessions on this other fun stuff. You can do that over at www.tier1trading.com. But if we go to the downside, we've got an X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D bat pattern setting up as well. So we've got something to look at here on Canada Yen, no matter what the market decides to do.